think we have to make uh, to the general public uh, the case for free trade, uh, keep making that case because free trade uh, has been under attack at different times in recent years. And with the UK being returned to having its independent trade policy, we mustn't ever forget uh, that we need to keep the public on side. Secondly, I'm really excited about Britain uh, taking back its position right at the centre of the global trading system, retaking our independent seat at the World Trade Organization and making sure globally on all international fora that the UK remains a key, uh, a key activist uh, for free trade. And the third area is prioritizing future trade agreements and also reducing trade barriers. As you know, we don't, you don't always need a trade agreement to reduce trade barriers. But I see the uh, key support for the, what the government is trying to do on trade agreements with the United States, Australia, New Zealand, Japan, and acceding to the CPTPP uh, trading group as well. Yeah, I think that's right. I mean, you cannot uh, do trade policy in isolation from the rest of government. Uh, we have the opportunity as a result of Brexit to set our own regulatory course, uh, particularly after the 31st of December of this year. And really important that we grab that opportunity to make sure the UK domestic regulation uh, enables us to foster free trade and enables the British people um, to get the maximum uh, profit uh, out of uh, uh, the UK uh, leaving the European Union and being able to set uh, its own regulatory and trade policies. Well, I think Parliament will play a key role in all this. Uh, MPs, uh, I don't think, are used to uh, uh, having trade policy on the floor of the House of Commons uh, and actually being uh, uh, issues in relation to trade uh, cropping up in anything from constituency surgeries uh, to businesses they visit. So I think actually having Parliament uh, play a much bigger role, I think MPs will be playing a big role in trade policy in the same way they do in the United States and Australia and so on. Uh, free independent trading countries do that. And I think generally we want to make sure that MPs uh, properly appreciate it's not just a, a set of producer interests in trade, uh, but the consumer interest is incredibly important. And uh, it's very, very important in your role, I think, as a member of parliament uh, to be listening not just to the producer, but also to the consumers. Uh, what can often happen is producers shout more loudly uh, than consumers. Uh, but traditionally, you know, the, the role of the UK will be in making sure that the consumer interest, I think, is heard uh, uh, loud and clear. And I think MPs will play a key role there. So the Parliamentary Free Trade Caucus We'll be looking to do exactly that to make sure we get a proper balance uh, between different interests uh, in our trade policy and how Parliament approaches trade. Well, I think it was always a mistake, uh, the previous approach to effectively sort of bifurcate the two sets of talks to say, look, our big issue, our big problem is the EU talks. Let's do that first, get that done and then move on to the other talks. We've got to do uh, the two together because a, uh, a concession or an agreement with the European Union uh, on things like standards or regulatory alignment or dynamic alignment, if we did any of those things, um, then the knock-on impact uh, on our other trading partners and what we could do with that trading partner uh, it could be profound. And we need to realise together at the same time uh, what the knock-on effects of, of doing something here with the EU would, would be on our ability to do something here with Australia, Japan or the CPTPP. So uh, doing the two together and understanding the two sets of processes at the same time I think is incredibly helpful the only way to really do it properly and make sure we get the best possible deal uh, with, with all of our counterparties. You know, that's ultimately what we're doing. It's a negotiation. Of course, these are all our friends, but it's still a negotiation. We need to get the best possible deal for the UK in each set of negotiations. The UK-EU FTA, uh, which we launched about a year ago, uh, which looked at what a UK-EU FTA might look like, I think it's a really good example of that, where we took examples where the EU uh, recognized uh, a, another regulator across all kinds of different fields, uh, and we made sure that that could be put in one place where the EU would recognize effectively the UK uh, as having regulations which would be the same outcome and equivalent re regulatory regime. Incredibly important, you know, I've got a huge confidence in the UK's ability to set good regulations 
Brussels should sensibly have that same confidence in our ability to set our own regulations and thereby having the ability to recognise the UK regulator, not necessarily the same regulations, but an equivalent outcome.